Hey, how's it going out there today, everybody? Hope everybody's having a great day. Let me turn off this AC real quick. Oh, yeah, there we go. That might have the quality of the audio a little bit. Uh, so it is Monday. It is uh, February 17th. I am in Tennessee. It is warm out. I am done for the day. It's uh, about 11 o'clock. Uh, I pulled a load up from Georgia last night up here to Tennessee, overnight run. Uh, I'll get into that in a second. First thing is, first thing I want to talk about is trucker etiquette or etiquette. I don't know how you, I'm not, I'm not a, uh, very good with the English language, so, but, uh, you know, just reminders for people, um, Number one, if you are in a truck stop and it is 10 o'clock at night, uh, keep your air horn to yourself, you know? Like, <laughs> some guy last night, somebody, I don't know, pulled in front of a fuel island in front of him or something. He was going off on that air horn, and I'm like, dude, like, seriously, there's like 80 people asleep here, and you're going to go doing all that. So uh, keep your feelings to yourself, you know? It's trucking. Uh, people are going to do stupid crap, um, you know? Call your mom, tell her about it. Don't uh, don't be hitting that air horn like that, you know? And, um, you know, which I say trucker etiquette, that's like uh, that's like rabbit horns, right? You know, uh, you've heard about it, but it's really just a myth, I think. Um, <laughs> I don't know. But yeah, lay off that, uh, lay off that air horn, and uh, if you're coming into a rest area or a truck stop, and there's like, you know, a 1% grade, uh, maybe you don't need the Jake brake coming in there full blast. Um, I don't know, if you got the big stacks and you like to hit the Jake brake hard, it may tickle your butthole or whatever it does for you, but, uh, you know, don't do it coming into a rest area or a truck stop, you know, kind of coast into that thing. Um, of course, I guess if you got the big loud pipes, you're wanting to be heard and seen, and uh, so you got to do it to let everybody know you've arrived. Uh, fun fact, I don't care you're there, uh, just, I don't, you know, no, but you're no big deal to me, uh, just as I'm no big deal to anyone else, so, uh, keep your Jake break to yourself if you got it, uh, you know, with your big loud pipes coming into the truck stop at night, um, you know, it's, you're not coming down a mountain, you're pulling into a rest area, you know, it's, it can be done without a Jake break. Um, so yeah, that little rant's over, and, uh, uh, excuse me, um, so, I had a rough weekend, I think the last video I did, I don't know, it was in Minnesota, or I was doing something, I'm sure, probably in Wisconsin, so the Friday, I grabbed a, or Thursday afternoon, I grabbed a FedEx load coming down to Atlanta, uh, for a Saturday morning, it had one stop, you know, typical, my FedEx stuff has one stop on one side of Atlanta. They typically pull off two or three pallets, and then I drop and hook on the other, on the, uh, east side of Atlanta. So, uh, we didn't have any dropped, well, FedEx hadn't unloaded our trailer. We have, one, we keep one, you know, it's like, a. We do these loads, they bring them in there like every two days. So, you know, it gives FedEx two days to unload the trailer from previous. So we drop and we hook. FedEx had not unloaded that trailer yet. I don't know what they were up to, but that thing had been sitting there for two days. And, um, put me in a real pickle. So, um, I had a load that had to be picked up, up in, uh, Buford. Buford, Georgia. Love that name. That's a, that's a great Georgia name. Um. So yeah, that was supposed to be picked up by 2.30, and uh, yeah, because I didn't have a drop trailer at FedEx, I had to go 20 miles south to a different customer of ours, grab an empty, then go to Buford, and by the time I got to Buford, I was about, oh, I don't know, a half hour past the shipping time. Everyone was gone. So... I asked the guard, I said, well, they do, do they work on Sunday? And he said, yeah, you just got to call them because they come in at different times. And I was like, okay, well, I'm going to go to the truck stop and park, which is 20 miles away. Went over there, parked, got up early Sunday morning, called them. Uh, shipping was open. They said, come on down. I get down there um, and I check in and they said, uh, yeah, we gave that load to a different company because you guys didn't make it here on time yesterday. 
needless to say, it was not happy with that. So, uh, you know, got a hold of dispatch on it. And um, I wasn't too mad about it because the load was going to Cleveland. And I'm like, you know, I take it or leave it when it comes to Cleveland. Um, it was a heavy load, wasn't paying that great, you know. So I, was, I wasn't too disappointed. I was just mad that I was ready to run, you know, I had a full clock. And now I gotta find something else to pull. So I sat around for two or three hours looking for something. Finally, I found a uh, JB Hunt load that was coming out of uh, out of Atlanta, coming up to uh, just outside of Nashville. Overnight run, picked up at 11 o'clock at night, delivered uh, nine o'clock this morning. Uh, honestly, it kind of all worked out for me. I lost some time on the uh, the fact that. I would have been, the, the load going to Cleveland delivered at 9 o'clock tonight, so really it was kind of a push because the JB Hunt load paid better, but it was about 250 less miles, but it was almost paying the same amount, I guess because it was an overnight run, you know, and a lot of people don't like getting their clock on the nighttime schedule, so I went with it. Um, like I said, it was paying almost the same amount. Um, you know, I got a little bit of pay from the company for the, uh, hassle of running down to get the empty trailer from the other location and then going up and coming back and, you know, it was just, it was about 150 miles of, uh, running around like a chicken with my head cut off, um, uh, Saturday. So I got a little compensation for that, not an adequate compensation, which is, uh, you know, it's. It's kind of become the what to expect here, you know. But they do help you out some, but they do not, um, you know, they, they do not pay you what you should be making if it's like their screw up or a customer screw up, um, which is disappointing. But anyway, grab the JB Hunt load. Uh, like I said, it, it was paying pretty good. For a 300 mile run, it was paying like 850 bucks, which, if you consider the other load, was paying like a thousand to go 600 and uh, I think it was like 680 miles or something like that. Uh, you know, I'd rather do this the shorter run. It weighed 25,000 pounds. I got eight miles a gallon on it. Even coming up Mont Eagle, uh, it averaged out at eight miles a gallon. So, uh, you know, I wasn't too mad at it. I, was, I just kind of took it as it come, and uh, seems like it all worked out. I'm out of hours right now, though, and I don't gain any, or I don't, my 10-hour break's not over until um, probably like 10 o'clock tonight. So the odds of loading something out tonight after 10 o'clock uh, are kind of slim. So my Monday's kind of screwed over. Um... I don't know. I didn't use a lot of hours Saturday. I didn't use a lot of hours uh, coming into Monday or Sunday. Um, you know, and then Monday I ran, you know, like maybe four or five hours today. So should have a decent clock set up for the rest of the week. We just got to find something to keep us uh, moving for the rest of the week, hopefully. Um, it. I don't know. I'm seeing like... When I look at the load board here lately, it's like there's there's more freight, but the rates are still kind of what it is. You know, they're they, they're not coming up, and the dead areas are still dead areas. The good areas are seem like they're picking up a little volume. So maybe we're kind of coming out of the winter slump early. Um, I hope so. Want to get on some good paying freight for the spring and summer. Uh, got a lot of plans coming on uh saving up for a new truck right now um you know i got this truck on lease but um you know i i'm to the point with it where i'm willing to pay the penalty to turn it back in it's like every three months that you keep it you know zero to three months you pay the full you know penalty to turn it back in and then three to six months it goes down a little bit six months to nine months it goes down some more and then you know it's a it's a one year with an option to renew so um you know if you turn it in at the one year you don't you know you don't pay anything but 
I'm kind of to the point with it where um, I think I'm willing to pay the fee on it just because, you know, I'm not building any equity in this truck. And, you know, I jumped into this deal for the simple fact of I did need something, you know, to get going again, something reliable. And, uh, you know, it has been a pretty reliable truck, but huge lease payment on these trucks, you know. Um, Peterbilt's got to get their money, and uh, the buyout on it at a year is, um, I'm like, you know, I told them, I said, you realize your buyout at the end of the year is more expensive than what you're offering a truck that's a year older than this one. So I'm like, you know, other than the fact that you get to know this truck for a year, I don't see why anybody would pay the premium. You know, I would if I had the whatever they want the buyout on this is, if I had that kind of money, I would just go buy a truck, you know, straight from them if I wanted this type of truck. Um, but yeah, saving up some funds right now, trying to, um, Trying to find something that's got a, you know, something I can finance at a little bit better rate. Something that I will, uh, you know, my uh, my payments will go toward the equity of the truck. I know trucks are horrible investments. Um, they just are. You know, what I mean, it's 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 uh, definitely not a um, asset. It's a uh, liability. But the fact of the matter is. Um, you know, I would rather build that equity, even though it's a horrible investment. You know, it's my trade, so I don't look at it as just a pure investment. Like, you know, if I was buying a stock or you know something like that. Um, so I'm willing to take that a little bit because the way it is here is, um, you know, I think you can buy a decent truck and operate it cheaper than you know these leases are. So. That's kind of where I'm at with that, um, you know. And when you buy a truck, it really is to me, it's it's a roll of the dice. You can have them tested every way you want, but you have no idea when that turbo is going to go, or you have no idea when you know, like with my other truck, you know, when the rear end is going to go out in it. Like, you know, dyno testing and doing all that, it's great, you know. But you kind of take a roll of the dice and. I'm kind of back to the point to where it's like, okay, taking the roll of the dice is worth the money at this point. You know, I'll pay a little bit to turn this truck back in, but it's like, you know, it's not the end of the world to turn it back in. So that's what I'm thinking right now. Saving up, uh, trying to get a down payment on a truck. Um, I don't know. I don't know. I'm thinking, uh, if I could find the right truck, I wouldn't mind a, a, a really older truck, you know. Get away from all the uh, DPF and the uh, DEF. Um, seems to be when you have problems with a truck these days, that's a big part of it. You know, that's why I ended up selling my 2013 Cascadia was because it was just after treatment problem, after, after treatment problem, you know. Took the... Uh, took the... Um, DPF filters out, cleaned them myself, um, but, you know, it's like those dealer codes are on there, and you have to go to a dealer or have somebody that has the Freightliner software to release those codes, or they just will not go away, and that causes a lot of problems because, you know, they want, they want you to pay their repair fees to get those removed, you know, and I don't know. I seen a I seen a video. A guy had a, a code reader the other day. Uh, driving by Burrell had one. I, I think about uh, boy, maybe I should have bought one of those and gave it a try. But yeah, I, I had a lot of problems with the uh, after treatment system on it. You know, uh, took them out, cleaned them, put them back in, and then had more problems with it. Took it to Freightliner. They took them out. Um, you know, I had them out about a month before Freightliner did, and Freightliner took them out and said they were cracked. And uh, I didn't see any cracks. Of course, you know, I'm not a mechanic, but I'm thinking maybe, you know, it might have been one of those things where they just wanted to sell some new DPF filters. 
The gasket kit to take those out and put them back in is not cheap either. That's like uh, 350 bucks if you can get a deal on them. If you buy them through Freightliner, they're like 500 bucks. So, um, you know, I'm not a huge fan of uh, trucks with DEF. Um, you know, I'm just not. It's uh, they haven't got it right. They've had all these years to work on it and get it right. And what they start putting those little trucks in 2011, and um, you know, here where I'm at, every time I go in the shop, it never fails. There's a truck in there with a DPF problem, and you know they got different kinds of trucks. You know they got they got Freightliners, they got uh, Peterbilts. Uh, I think they got a couple uh, Western Stars. Um, you know. And it's just, these manufacturers, they know this is like, this is a tax they can put on people. And, uh, man, it's, it's, it's a hell of a tax because I put about 10 grand into my, um, into my exhaust system on that Freightliner before I sold it. And it didn't take long to rack up that kind of bill. And that is purely just the repair bills. Uh, in parts. That's not counting the downtime. That's not counting the hotels. It's not counting the tow bills. Um, you know, it was about 10 grand just in parts and labor on that. So you can imagine why I'm a little bit jaded uh, on, on having a deaf system. But uh, yeah, that's where I'm at right now, guys. I appreciate everybody watching. If you could share, like, and subscribe. Uh, if you watch my videos and you're not subscribed, uh, I would recommend you click on that subscribe button and, uh, you know, uh, hook me up, you know. Appreciate that, everybody. Leave me some comments. I love comments. Thank you. Have a nice day. Everybody take care of each other out there. Later.